Okay guys, Jay Prada Performance. Gonna talk about the C4 case a little bit and the C4 number 9 bearing kit that we used to sell. I uh, haven't had them for a long time. Uh, but a lot of guys ask about that kit still and I don't know, it may return here and there. Uh, it's, it's getting to be a problem getting these races. You know, getting these and getting them so they're not all rusted up and, you know, I don't want to make them brand new. It costs too much money. Not for the amount of money that, you know, I'm sorry, not for the amount of uh, volume we were selling them at. The money doesn't work out, unfortunately, so. And as these C4s get harder to find, I don't think that situation is going to get any better there. Volume's not going to go increase and from what I see it'll de decrease probably but uh, anyways so here's what we're gonna show you here and this is pretty simple you know a lot of guys talk about the difference between the C4 and the C5 case and a lot of guys want to get the C5 case because it says it has better oiling well it does but if you got a C4 case, don't worry about that. You can make the C4 case work just as good. Now, so what you'll notice, uh, the difference between C4 and C5. C4 has the smaller uh, cooler fittings. Not an issue. I have flow tested this. As long as you step up your line size to 3 8 and you can do that with AN fittings and things very easily. Do not worry about that. What I do on the C4 case, and I don't think you're going to be able to see in there, but inside here there's a hole, okay? And this hole, this is the return port. And it comes into the bushing here. And that that hole there I enlarge that okay especially if you have an early case from the 60s that hole is really small I forget the size but it's pretty small and 70 and up it got a little bigger and then 82 86 when it became the C5 it got even bigger uh, so you can drill that open you don't need to go crazy on it but uh, I use a 730 seconds drill on that, but just open that passage up all the way into the bushing. You know, take your bushing out and drill from out here and just drill all the way through. Okay, simple stuff. Probably already know that. Let's look at a couple other things. So if we look down in here... Now, when I used to sell this number 9 kit, I used to tell you... You got a hole here, uh, which I forget the size. It's around, a, I think, a sixteenth of an inch or so normally. You can drill that open a little bit bigger. No more than an eighth of an inch at the most. Okay, don't go crazy. Because that'll just, if you go too crazy, that just drops pressure from the rest of the oiling system. Again, everything's always about a balance, so... Uh, no need to go crazy here, but open this up a little bit and you can see this little grind mark here uh, Not you know not super pretty or anything, but it doesn't matter uh, And I used to tell you to do this in the instructions too So just you know take a little Dremel tool or something and just grind this little slot not real deep Don't go crazy on it. It just helps the oil get around the uh, The spring retainer because your, your retainer is going to sit here and it's going to sit a little bit closer to the case than it normally did when the thrust washer was there. So that just helps the oil get around there a little bit. I mean, not a big deal if you don't do that. I don't really think it's uh, super important, but I did it anyways and recommended it to you. All right, so the other thing, the number nine kit, you have this little hub in the case. And these can vary in size. Uh, they were usually somewhat consistent, but 
they can also be somewhat unpredictable so I would give you this steel ring this is a steel ring that I provided and this needs to press fit onto that and I stress press fit not you don't want it loose if you were to get one of these kits and occasionally you'll see them come back on my website I you know I get a few at a time and they're generally not around long when they come on the site but if you do happen to get one make sure this ring presses if it does not press uh, you have to measure this for me send me this ring back and give me the dimension of in this dimension and then I'll make you one that fits uh, that's how I was handling that and you only want this to press fit, you know, maybe two thousandths press fit at the most. You don't want a super heavy press fit where you're going to distort the ring trying to get it in. And also spread the ring so much where the outside diameter is going to change and the bearing won't spin freely on it anymore. Okay, this is just a little hub adapter to locate the bearing. And the way that worked is this is just an industrial bearing. So very easy to get at any bearing place. Uh, so after I'm dead and gone, you can still get these no problem. So you put your washer down against the aluminum case. And then you just have your roller bearing. That goes in there. And make sure this spins freely. Okay, if, if you press this on too heavy, this ring stretches and then this won't spin anymore. Uh, that'll lead to bearing failure, so make sure that can turn freely and Then what you used to get in the kit and there was two different styles of races depending on the year model So this is this is a later model see it's got this step in it The earlier one did not have that It was kind of the same on both sides so I've cut this backside and then we would radius this end. The factory puts just to like a 45 degree chamfer. Uh, we actually machine this radius on this side. So you want to make sure, okay, your nice shiny hardened side is going to go against the bearing. This is going to touch the bearing. Not this side that we've cut. And you can see, you know, where the material is no longer, it's still heat treated on the outside where it's shiny, but then the, the finish gets rough in here because we've lost the heat treating, we've machined it away. But this is the back side, so we don't care. I've had people put these in upside down, and the bearing typically won't last all that long doing that. So just to, you know, just to show you. This is going to ride in this bearing like this, so, you know, the more ugly side facing you and the prettier side up against the bearing. And on these early models, I used to put, I'd put a little uh, grind mark on the side that goes away from the bearing so people wouldn't confuse it. I think, you know, with the chamfer here, people were a little less likely to screw that up than this earlier style so I would typically put a grind mark on here to tell you make sure this side does not touch the bearing put that up against the drum so that was it uh, it's a pretty simple deal and it works good and this is just uh, like I said just an industrial bearing this one's an Ena you can get a Timken uh, there's different brands but uh, very simple very easy to get. Any bearing manufacturer has these, or supplier, I should say. Uh, you can get it through us, but I typically just recommend, you know, if you just want the bearing, you know, just just get it at a, you know, whatever your local or whoever, you know, if it's a mail order deal, you want to mail order it, whatever, you can just get it through them. You just give them the OD and ID of it and that's pretty much it and you only need one washer uh, and that's gonna go you know obviously you want the washer up against the aluminum if you run this bearing against the aluminum yeah you're gonna have problems it's gonna it's not gonna last so okay that's pretty much it pretty simple deal so don't worry about getting a C5 case just drill yours open if you got a C5 case you really don't need to do anything 
Another thing I'll mention too uh, on the C5 case, that's going to have, it'll have this hole and then it's going to have another hole in here and it's a big hole like an eighth inch or so. Okay, so the C5 actually has two holes here. If you have a C5 case with the two holes, this inner hole, it gets covered up by this bearing race, okay? So that hole's kind of useless. So two ways to handle that. You can either just let it get covered up and just kind of forget that it exists and just, you know, enlarge the hole, do your slot, uh, just like I told you on a C4, okay? Or other option is don't enlarge this hole, leave this alone, and like I did here with this slot, take that slot and connect these two. You know, just take your Dremel tool and go from this hole to this hole and connect it so the oil can get around the washer on the second hole. That's all. Um, or you can do it like this. Either way is fine. Don't overthink it. It's not that complicated. And I think really that's all I got to tell you on these cases. Um, you know, a 60s case, you can typically identify that. That'll have, it'll have a boss here and a tube, a vent tube that went on this rear servo cover. The 70 and ups didn't have that. So that's an easy way to identify those cases from the 60s. And if you do have those early cases, you have to bear in mind that a 70 and up valve body doesn't fit in them. It'll bolt in there, but there is some alignment issues, if I remember correctly, around the intermediate servo where these holes are and things. So you really got to make sure you have the early valve body with the early case and the late model valve body with the late case. So that's important there too. And this is a late case in case you're wondering. Uh, okay, that is all on this. And thanks for watching.